Propertius is doing something that a lot of Roman poets in this period do, which is being very surprisingly Greek in lots of ways. Um, Romans were fascinated with Greek culture in all sorts of ways, and in, in literature you tend to see that in the sort of mythology that, that they draw on. Ro Romans seem much more interested in drawing on Greek mythology than on their own mythology a lot of the time, which is quite interesting. But I think in, in Propertius it's part of the sort of slight countercultural um, aspect to what he's doing. Uh, he's saying rather than, than being Roman, rather than going and being a soldier and, and getting married and producing you know, children who will be good uh, citizens of the empire, um, I am going to be Greek. I am going to spend my time reading and writing poetry, which is a very Greek thing to do. Um, sort of impractical. He talks about that in uh, Poem 21 where he talks about going off to, to Athens where people do things like philosophy and art and, and it's agreed that the Greeks are very good at these things and sort of that these are good things to do but, but are they good things to do for Romans? Um, and so every time there's, there's Greek mythology, every time um, Propertius uses those examples rather than examples from Roman history, which he could equally well have done in lots of cases, there are lots of Roman examples of faithful wives, but no he goes for Odysseus and Penelope instead. Um, he's really sort of setting up that this, this poetry is, is not totally Roman and that, that's both um, quite a sort of daring thing to do, um, something that, that's going against the prevailing sort of nationalism and pride in Rome that, that is happening politically at this point un, under Augustus. Um, but it's also ambitious in a literary sense because everybody knows in Rome at this period that the Greeks have the best literature and Propertius, like some other poets, is trying to produce Roman literature that can really compete with it.